One. If you buy some onions from the market, most of what you buy is a swollen leaves, b swollen stems, c swollen roots, d swollen endosperms. None of the above. If you buy some onions from the market, most of what you buy is water. Onions are made up of layers of thin, papery modified leaves, bulb scales, which store food reserves, but the bulk of the onion is made up of water. 2. In which main form is the product of photosynthesis transported from the leaves to the other parts of the plant? The product of photosynthesis is transported from the leaves to the other parts of the plant mainly in the form of sucrose, a type of sugar. 3. During photosynthesis plants require the presence of during photosynthesis, plants require the presence of light, carbon dioxide, and water in addition to chlorophyll, the green pigment found in plant cells. 4. The main end product of photosynthesis is transported away from the leaves by the The main end product of photosynthesis, which is glucose or simple sugars made from it, is transported away from the leaves to other parts of the plant through a network of flow M tissues. The flow M tissues form veins throughout the plant, and the process of moving glucose through the flow M is called translocation. 5. Which parts of a leaf have chloroplasts? Chloroplasts are usually found in the mesophyll cells of a leaf. Specifically, they are present in the chloroplast rich layer known as the palisade layer and also in the spongy layer of the mesophyll. These layers are located within the interior of the leaf and are responsible for carrying out the process of photosynthesis. 6. Which part of a leaf has no chloroplasts? The part of a leaf that has no chloroplasts is the epidermis, which is the outermost layer of cells covering the leaf. The epidermis is mainly composed of transparent and thin-walled cells that provide protection and regulate gas exchange between the leaf and its environment. While some epidermal cells can contain pigments such as anthocyanins, they typically do not contain chloroplasts and therefore do not play a direct role in photosynthesis. 7. An epidermal cell from a leaf was put in a hypertonic solution. After some time the leaf became. An epidermal cell from a leaf being put in a hypertonic solution would cause water to move out of the cell, resulting in the cell shrinking and becoming flaccid. However, this would not necessarily cause the entire leaf to become distorted or damaged. If only one cell was affected, the overall effect on the leaf would be minimal. However, if a large number of cells were affected, the leaf could become wilted or even desiccated dried out, depending on the severity and duration of the hypertonic stress. 8. If you go to the market and buy some Irish potatoes and onions, you will actually be buying a stem tubers and fleshy leaves, b root tubers and fleshy leaves, c root tubers and stem tubers, d underground stems. If you go to the market and buy some Irish potatoes and onions, you will actually be buying b root tubers in the case of irish potatoes and d underground stems in the case of onions irish potatoes are stem tubers which are enlarged storage structures that grow from the stem of the plant underground onions on the other hand are bulbs which are underground stems surrounded by swollen fleshy leaves that store nutrients 9 dark stage of photosynthesis takes place the dark stage of photosynthesis also called the Calvin cycle or light independent reactions, takes place in the stroma of the chloroplasts, which is the fluid-filled region surrounding the thylakoid membranes. It does not require direct light, but it does require the products of the light-dependent reactions ATP and NADPH, that occurs in the thylakoid membranes, as well as carbon dioxide from the air, to produce glucose and other sugars. The dark stage can occur at any time and is not dependent on the presence of light. Ten. In photosynthesis, light provides the energy to. In photosynthesis, light provides the energy to excite electrons and chlorophyll molecules of the thylakoid membranes and chloroplasts. The excited electrons are then passed through a series of electron transport chain molecules, which generate energy in the form of ATP and the reducing power of NADPH. This energy and reducing power is then used to drive the dark stage of photosynthesis, where CO2 is converted into glucose and other sugars. Therefore, light is a key factor in providing the energy required for the process of photosynthesis to occur. 11. An example of macronutrient in plant nutrition is. An example of a macronutrient in plant nutrition is nitrogen. Nitrogen is essential for plant growth and is a major component of amino acids, nucleic acids, proteins, and chlorophyll, which are all critical for structural integrity, enzyme function, and photosynthesis. Other common macronutrients include phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, which are needed in relatively large quantities by plants for optimal growth and development. 12. An example of micronutrient in plant nutrition is. An example of a micronutrient in plant nutrition is iron. 
Iron is a trace element required in very small amounts, but it is still essential for many plant processes. It is important for the proper function of enzymes involved in chlorophyll synthesis, respiration, and nitrogen fixation. Other common micronutrients include zinc, boron, copper, manganese, and molybdenum, which are also needed in small quantities for optimal plant growth and development. 13. The series of reactions in the dark phase of photosynthesis take place in the the series of reactions in the dark phase of photosynthesis also called the Calvin cycle or light independent reactions, take place in the stroma of the chloroplasts. The stroma is the fluid-filled region surrounding the thylakoid membranes where the light-dependent reactions occur. The dark phase does not require direct light, but it does require the products of the light-dependent reactions ATP and NADPH, and carbon dioxide from the air. In the stroma, the carbon dioxide is fixed into organic compounds sugars, through a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions that are collectively known as the Calvin cycle, named after the scientist who discovered it. The newly synthesized sugars are then stored or used by the plant for energy. 14. Mostly photosynthesis occurs in the Photosynthesis mostly occurs in the chloroplasts of plant cells. Chloroplasts are specialized organelles that contain pigments called chlorophyll, which are responsible for absorbing light energy and converting it into chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. The process mainly takes place in the thylakoid membranes of the chloroplasts. The thylakoids contain pigments that are organized into photoreceptor units called photosystems. The photosystems contain the electron transport chains that convert light energy into chemical energy. The newly produced ATP and NADPH are then utilized in the dark stage of photosynthesis, with the process taking place in the stroma, which surrounds the thylakoid membranes in the chloroplasts. 15. What are the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis? The rate of photosynthesis is affected by several factors. 1. Light intensity, as light is the primary energy source for photosynthesis, an increase in light intensity generally increases the rate of photosynthesis until the plant reaches its saturation point. 2. Amount of carbon dioxide, an increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide usually leads to increased rates of photosynthesis until the limiting amount of another factor, such as light or temperature, is reached. 3. Temperature, photosynthesis typically works most efficiently within a specific range of temperatures. If the temperature is too low, photosynthesis will slow down, if it is too high, the enzymes involved in the process may denature. 4. Water availability, water is required to keep the plant cells turgid, and it also supplies the hydrogen ions needed to produce NADPH during photosynthesis. 5. Concentration of nutrients, various nutrients are essential for optimal plant growth and photosynthetic activity, and deficiencies in one or more nutrients can lead to reduced rates of photosynthesis. 16. Give the name of the storage organ for each of the following plants. A. Cassava. B. Irish potato. C. Onion. A. The storage organ for cassava is the root, specifically the enlarged part of the root called the tuberous root. B. The storage organ for Irish potato is also the modified underground stem, known as a tuber. C. The storage organ for onion is the bulb, which is a specialized underground stem with fleshy leaves surrounding a stem bud. 17. A. Highlight three reasons why photosynthesis is important to living things. B. Name five factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. A. Three reasons why photosynthesis is important to living things are. 1. Oxygen production. Photosynthesis is responsible for producing oxygen gas as a byproduct, which is essential for the survival of most living organisms. 2. Food production, photosynthesis produces organic compounds such as sugars that serve as a primary source of food for many organisms, directly or indirectly. 3. Carbon dioxide removal, photosynthesis removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converts it into organic compounds, regulating its concentration. b. 5 factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis are 1. Light intensity 2. Temperature 3. Available carbon dioxide 4. Availability of water. 5. Level of nutrients and minerals in the soil. 18. What do you understand by the term nutrition? Nutrition refers to the process by which living organisms obtain and use food for survival, growth, and reproduction. It involves the intake of nutrients, which are substances that provide energy, raw materials for building and repairing tissues, and regulating body functions. A balanced and adequate nutritional intake is important for ensuring optimal health and well being of organisms. Nutrition can involve various factors, including diet, digestion, absorption, and metabolism of nutrients in the body. 19. 
Give five reasons why organisms require nutrients. Five reasons why organisms require nutrients are 1. Energy. Nutrients provide the energy required by organisms to carry out life processes, such as growth, reproduction, and movement. 2. Building blocks. Nutrients serve as the building blocks for the synthesis of biological molecules, such as proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates, which are essential for maintaining the structure and function of cells and tissues. 3. Repair and maintenance. Nutrients are needed for repairing and maintaining tissues and organs throughout the lifespan of an organism. 4. Metabolism. Nutrients are involved in various metabolic processes, such as cellular respiration and photosynthesis which are important for the production of ATP, a molecule that stores and transfers energy within cells. 5. Regulation of body functions. Many nutrients, such as vitamins and minerals, are required for the regulation of important body functions, such as fluid balance, immune system function, and enzymatic activity. 20. What is the role of each of the following structures of the leaf during photosynthesis? A. Xylem vessels. B. Chlorophyll. C. Guard cells. D. Phloem. A. Xylem vessels. These structures transport water and minerals from the roots to the leaves, supplying the water required during photosynthesis. B. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a pigment molecule found in the chloroplasts of plant cells. It plays a vital role in photosynthesis by absorbing light energy and converting it into chemical energy, which then fuels the process of photosynthesis. C. Guard cells. Guard cells are specialized cells that regulate the opening and closing of stomata, small pores found on the surface of leaves. They control the entry of gases, including carbon dioxide, that are needed for photosynthesis while preventing excessive water loss through transpiration. D. Phloem. Phloem vessels transport organic compounds synthesized during photosynthesis, such as sugars and amino acids, to other parts of the plant where they are required for growth and energy production. 21. Elaborate the parts of a palisade cell. A palisade cell is a specialized plant cell found in the mesophyll tissue of a leaf, and it is responsible for performing photosynthesis. Palisade cells possess several parts, including 1. Cell wall. The rigid cell wall is the outermost layer of the cell, providing structural support and protection to the cell. 2. Cell membrane. The cell membrane is a thin, flexible layer that surrounds the cell, regulating the movement of substances in and out of the cell. 3. Chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are organelles that contain the green pigment chlorophyll, which absorbs light energy and converts it into chemical energy in the form of glucose. 4. Cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is the fluid matrix within the cell, containing enzymes and other necessary molecules for the cell's metabolic processes. 5. Nucleus. The nucleus is the control center of the cell. It contains the cell's genetic material in the form of DNA, which controls the cell's functions. 6. Vacuole. The vacuole is a large, fluid-filled sac within the cell, used for storage, regulation of cell pressure, and waste disposal. 7. Mitochondria. Mitochondria are organelles that produce energy for the cell through respiration. 8. Endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is the network of membranes within the cell. It is involved in protein synthesis and transportation within the cell. Palisade cells are characterized by their elongated shape and their structural adaptations, such as a high concentration of chloroplasts and thin cell layers, make them efficient at performing photosynthesis. The arrangement of palisade cells within a leaf forms a continuous, dense layer that maximizes the absorption of light energy, necessary for optimal plant growth and survival. 22. A. Uh, elaborate the parts of a chloroplasts. B. State the parts where. I. Light stage of photosynthesis occurs. 2. Dark stage of photosynthesis occurs. A chloroplasts are specialized organelles found in plant cells and eukaryotic algae, involved in the process of photosynthesis. Each chloroplast contains several parts, including 1. Thylakoids. Thylakoids are flattened sacs of membrane that contain the photosynthetic pigments, including chlorophyll, necessary for light absorption and the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. 2. Grana. Grana are stacks of thylakoids that are connected by unstacked thylakoid regions, called stroma lamellae. The grana are the sites of the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. 3. Stroma. The stroma is a fluid matrix surrounding the thylakoid membrane. It contains enzymes, ribosomes, and DNA, necessary for the functioning of the chloroplast and for the synthesis of the organic molecules in the light and dependent reactions of photosynthesis. 4. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment found in the thylakoid membranes that are capable of absorbing energy from light. 5. 
Carotenoids. Carotenoids are pigments present in chloroplasts that can absorb light of different wavelengths and protect chlorophyll from photo damage. B. The two stages of photosynthesis, light dependent and light independent, occur in different parts of the chloroplast. I. Light dependent stage of photosynthesis occurs in the thylakoid membranes, specifically within the grana. In this stage, light energy is absorbed and converted into chemical energy through photophosphorylation, resulting in the production of ATP and NADPH. 2. Dark independent stage of photosynthesis, also called the Calvin cycle, occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. In this stage, carbon dioxide is fixed into organic molecules, such as glucose, using the energy stored in ATP and NADPH produced in the light-dependent stage. This process results in the regeneration of ADP and NADP plus for use in further cycles of the light-dependent stage. 23. Explain each of the following. A. Why a leaf cannot be tested for starch by adding dilute iodine solution directly. B. Why most leaves are thin with broad surfaces. C. Why plants will not photosynthesize in the dark? A. A leaf cannot be tested for starch by adding dilute iodine solution directly because starch is not present in the chloroplasts of a living plant cell in a free state, but is stored in the form of amyloplasts, which are colorless plastids. When a leaf is exposed to light during photosynthesis, the chloroplasts produce glucose, which is then converted into starch and stored in the form of amyloplasts in the cells. Thus, the leaf must be killed first by boiling it in water and then immersing it in alcohol to remove the chlorophyll, before it can be tested for starch using iodine solution. B. Most leaves are thin with broad surfaces to maximize the absorption of light necessary for photosynthesis. A larger surface area increases the area exposed to sunlight, allowing the leaf to capture more light energy for photosynthesis. Additionally, a thinner leaf allows for the efficient diffusion of gases through the leaf tissues necessary for respiration and photosynthesis. Sea plants will not photosynthesize in the dark because light energy is required for the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis involves light-dependent reactions that require light energy to be absorbed by pigments, such as chlorophyll, in the chloroplasts to produce ATP and NADPH. The availability of light also triggers the opening of stomata on the leaves, which allows carbon dioxide to enter the plant and oxygen to be released. Since there is no light in the dark, the process of photosynthesis cannot occur, and plants will rely on stored energy reserves to carry out metabolic processes in the absence of light. 24. A. Uh, briefly distinguish between the terms macro and micro elements. Give an example in each case. B. State three mineral elements, which are used in the synthesis of chlorophyll. C. What are the deficiency symptoms of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium in green plants? A. Uh, macro elements are essential mineral elements that are required by plants in relatively large quantities, usually more than 1 mg per gram of dry plant material. Examples include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Microelements, also known as trace elements, are essential mineral elements required in small amounts, usually less than 1 mg per gram of dry plant material. Examples include iron, chlorine, zinc, manganese, molybdenum, boron, and copper. b. Three mineral elements used in the synthesis of chlorophyll are magnesium, iron, and nitrogen. c. The deficiency symptoms of nitrogen in green plants include chlorosis or yellowing of leaves, stunted growth, and reduced plant vigor. The deficiency symptoms of phosphorus include dark green leaves, poor root growth, and delayed flowering or fruiting. The deficiency symptoms of potassium include yellowing of leaf margins and between veins, necrosis or death of leaf tissue, and weak stems. 25. A. Uh, describe the parts of guard cell. B. Stay two functions of guard cells. C. Briefly describe the mechanism of opening and closing of the stomata. Uh, guard cells are specialized cells found on the epidermis of plant leaves, surrounding and controlling the opening and closing of stomata. They have a kidney-like shape and are adapted to regulate gas exchange and transpiration in plants. The main parts of a guard cell include Cell wall, outermost layer, made up of cellulose, provides structural support to the cell. Cytoplasm, contains organelles such as mitochondria, ribosomes, and nucleus, responsible for carrying out cellular functions. Chloroplasts, organelles that contain chlorophyll pigments responsible for photosynthesis and the production of ATP. Vacuole, a large, membrane-bound sac that stores water, ions, and other substances, and helps to regulate turgor pressure within the cell. Nucleus, contains genetic material necessary for the production of proteins and cellular functions. B. The two functions of guard cells are. 
Regulating water loss and gas exchange, guard cells play a critical role in regulating the opening and closing of stomata, allowing for the diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen for photosynthesis while reducing water loss during transpiration. Responding to environmental stimuli, guard cells can sense environmental factors such as light intensity, temperature, and humidity, and respond by opening or closing the stomata to maintain optimal plant function. C. The mechanism of opening and closing of the stomata is mediated by the turgor pressure within the guard cells. When guard cells take up water by osmosis, they swell, become more turgid, and their shape changes, causing the stomatal pore to open. Conversely, when the guard cells lose water, they become flaccid and their shape changes, causing the stomatal pore to close. This occurs due to the differential thickening of the cell walls on the inner and outer sides of the guard cells. When the cell walls on the inner side of the guard cells are thickened by cellulose microfibrils, they are pulled inwards, causing the pore to close. When these walls are thin, the guard cells become turgid and the pore opens. The regulation of turgor pressure within guard cells is regulated by the uptake and loss of ions such as potassium and chloride through ion channels present in their plasma membrane. Various environmental and hormonal signals can alter the ionic balance, leading to changes in guard cell turgor pressure and the opening or closing of the stomatal pore. 26. Differentiate between a light reaction and dark reaction. B. Stomata and stomatal opening. C. Palisade layer and mesophyll layer. D. Cuticle and epidermis. A. Light reaction and dark reaction. Light reaction takes place in the thylakoid membranes of the chloroplasts and requires light energy to produce ATP and NADPH with the help of photosystems ion 2. Dark reaction, Calvin cycle, occurs in the stroma of chloroplasts and does not require light but relies on the ATP and NADPH produced during the light reaction to convert carbon dioxide into organic compounds like glucose. B. Stomata and stomatal opening. Stomata, small pores found on the surface of the leaves, stems and other plant organs that allow for the exchange of gases between the plant and the environment. Stomatal opening, the process by which the stomata opens to allow for gas exchange between the plant and its surroundings. This process involves the swelling of guard cells due to the uptake of water, where the increased turgor pressure causes the three-dimensional shape of the guard cells to change, and the stomata to open. See palisade layer and mesophyll layer. Palisade layer, a layer of elongated cells that are arranged parallel to each other in the leaf surface, found in the upper layer of the leaves, and are responsible for most of the photosynthesis in the plant. Mesophyll layer, a layer of cells found between the upper and lower epidermis of a leaf that contains the chloroplasts responsible for carrying out photosynthesis. D. Cuticle and epidermis. Cuticle, a waxy layer that covers the leaves of most plants, providing protection against excessive water loss or damage from external agents such as pathogens or harmful UV rays. Epidermis, a single or multiple layer of cells that covers the surface of the plant organs, providing protection and acting as the first line of defense against environmental stressors. 27. Given the following food storage structures provide examples for each. A. Bulb. B. Corm. C. Rhizome. D. Stem tuber. E. Root tuber. F. Tap root. A. Bulb, an underground storage structure that consists of a short stem with fleshy, scale-like leaves surrounding it, such as onion, garlic, and tulip. B. Corm, a swollen, underground stem that stores food and has a papery protective layer, such as crocus, taro, and gladiolus. C. Rhizome, a horizontally growing, underground stem that has small, scale-like leaves and nodes from which roots emerge. Examples include ginger, turmeric and ferns. D. Stem tuber, a swollen, underground stem that develops from an axillary bud and has buds or eyes on its surface from which new shoots can develop, such as potato and yam. E. Root tuber, an enlarged, fleshy root that stores nutrients, such as sweet potatoes, cassava, and carrots. F. Tap root, a single, main root that is thick and fleshy and grows vertically into the soil, such as beetroot, turnip and carrot.